السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلم السابقين وقائد الغرب المحجلين وشفيع المذنبين سيدنا ومولانا محمد اللهم صل وسلم بارك عليه وعلى آله الغر الميامين وأصحابه نجوم الدين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا زدنا علما فقينا إذا علمتنا أما بعد brothers and sisters one of the main problem that we face nowadays, you know, most of the Muslims, they became materialistic, you know, even the spiritual one, they will look at the spiritual view or aspect from the materialism, you know, which is completely, uh, 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 this, uh, we have a significant disadvantages there, you know, because we, we are losing significant amount of our children, you know, because of that particular problem, okay? And that's why uh, uh, this is perhaps, and it may be explained because the others, you know, they are superior than the Muslim in the physical matter. But we hold a matter, you know, of a treasure, you know, that in our hands, you know, and we should know the value of it, you know, spiritually. The Prophet ﷺ did say in one hadith, uh, I'm going to say it in Arabic, I try to translate it, you know, Inni <laughs> لضحكتم قليلا ولا بكيتم كثيرا ولا ما تلذذتم بالنساء على الفرش ولا خرجتم إلى الصعادات تجرؤون إلى الله عز وجل. That's mean the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did say in the, uh, uh, I do see the, the unseen for your people. I do hear the unheard you know for your people. Uh, there is a voice of heaviness you know of the heavens. Why? Because you you don't. Uh, it's it's full with angels. You know, you hardly find f four uh, fingers. You know, distance. You know, without having any uh, angel. You know, prostrating to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. If you know what I know, this is what the Prophet Sallallahu did say. You are going to laugh for a short period of time. You are going to cry for a long period of time, and you are not going to have good time. You know, on your beds. You know, with your women, and you are going to go outside your houses you know, screaming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are some of the spiritual matters that we should apply it to our life, you know. If you, if we, I, I have no doubt that all of your people, you, you love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the most important turning point you know, in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? When he received the first revelation from Sayyidina Jibreel, by the name, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, and you name it, you know. Is this spiritual or physical? This is spiritual matter. And that's why we should add to our life as Muslim, we should, we should add, add the spiritual matter. We are, I am, and you, you we are from two components. One component is the physical body. You are going to blame me if I have some dirt, you know, on my face or on my clothes or whatever, you know, if I have long nails or whatever, okay? In the same part, the other component of yours is the soul, okay, and it has a need. It has some some material that you should serve in this life. And the best one, you know, to have the well balanced way, you know, between the needs, you know, of your body and your your soul is the the holy Islam, you know. I did ask uh, an expert, you know, who was not Muslim, you know. I did ask him, you know, have you find, you know, in your life, you know, he was an expert, you know, in religions, you know. Any, any t 
teaching, you know, or any religion you give you in this balanced way, you know, between your body, you know, and your, your physical body and your soul? And he, the answer was no. Okay, what I'm trying to say, we should adapt to our life, you know, this matter, you know, of being spiritual, of connecting ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of us may feel that this is not needed or not necessary for everyone. It's needed for everyone. It's necessary for everyone. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu did mention, you know, about about mending your relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned it on Khutbat al Jumu'ah and something you know as narrated by Ibn Majah. Uh, I'm going to say it in Arabic. That's mean mend the, or repair the way between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has been mended, it has been repaired it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's side. We are the bad people you know we are the bad practitioners you know we don't mend our way we don't care I'm, 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 I feel sorry, you know, when, uh, when I speak as such, you know. We don't care about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We care about the money, we care about other factors, you know, much more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did instruct us here in this particular hadith, mend the way, mend the relation between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How I'm going, going to mend my, the relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He, he highlighted two items, you know. One is beneficial for you, the other one is beneficial for the others, you know. He did not mention anything you know beneficial to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is our case with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everyone surrounding me he may be very nice he may be very good to me you know he's going to supply me with some food with some uh, drink with with some clothes or whatever you know but I, I assume that they may have something, you know, or some benefit or some advantages, you know, to take from you. The only one in your case that is not going to get any benefit from with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did address us when he said, Ya ibadi, innakum lan tablughu darri fatadurruni wa lan tablughu naf'i wa fatanfa'unu. Oh my servants, we are not in the position that you are going to deliver some hurt or harm to me, you are not going to deliver any uh, any beneficial action to me, you know. And uh, I, I would like to mention it because this is my experience, you know. Alhamdulillah, since my birth, you know, I have been surrounded with very nice people. They love me, I love them, okay. But all of them, they may supply me, they may provide to me some food, some drinks, as I said before, you know. And this is, is going to confirm that I am an animal, okay? Why? Because this is, we share the same target, you know. When we eat, when we drink, when we have clothes, when we have housing, we are, as if we are sharing, you know, with the animals. I'm not here to argue, you know. For sure the humankind is going to have much more sophisticated way of eating, drinking, you know, and, and the housing and you name it, you know. But we share the same target. The only person in this life that confirmed that I am humankind is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Okay, and that's why we should understand this equation, you know. We should understand this, you know, and we should uh, highly build our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his messenger. We should build uh, his, the reliance on him subhanahu wa ta'ala, the confidence in him and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm sorry to tell you, what's the meaning of confidence, you know? Nowadays, you have some new Muslims, they may criticize the Prophet may, They may judge, you know, some of the ahadith. They have easy way, they will say this weak hadith, okay? Don't care about it, you know. Whereas, the, the, the non-believer in his time, وسلم, they used to believe him, to trust him much more than the believers nowadays, you know. This is what has been narrated in you know, Bukhari, you know, when Sayyidina Sa'ad Mu'az did tell one of those high figures of the Meccan people, you know, about certain statement of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm not going to, to uh, mention the whole story, okay? He, he did change all pattern of his life according to it, you know. 
Why? Because he used to trust him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to have confidence in him. He never tried any lie, you know, come from the holy mouth of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why, and out of that experience, I'm not telling you, you, know, you are believers, you are lovers, you, are, you should have much more confidence in him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But I'm sorry to tell you, most of the Muslims nowadays, they don't have that confidence, you know, in him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, we should have much more confidence. And uh, the, a person came to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asking him, give me an advice. And Sallallahu Alaihi gave him an advice, you know. Said he, then he said, I want one, one word. He said, لا تتهم الله على نفسك. Don't accuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu We tend to accuse Allah. We tend to speak badly about Allah. We tend to not trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We trust the money more in my pocket, you know, trust the friends more, you know. We don't trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, uh, to what extent we should trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To the, to the end of confidence, to the end of uh, trust, you know. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu gave this example to us. He said, إن الله يحمي عبده من الدنيا كما يحمي أحدكم مريضا. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is going to protect his servant, you know, in this life. The same way you protect your patient, you know. Usually I give this physical example. If you have very rich person, you know, and his father, you know, live with him, his father is diabetic, you know. And this father, you know, someday may, he, may, he may ask for candy or sugar or sweets or whatever, you know. This person will say, I'm sorry, we don't have anything in the kitchen. His kitchen is full, you know, with candies, with sweets, you know. He's going to say, I'm sorry. And this is, should be our way, you know, of relating ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever available to us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it available to us, you know, to, to make us, you know, having good life. And inshallah, good life in the hereafter, okay? We should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about it a lot, you know. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I kept begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make it available for me, I should have complete confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I should think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it away, not because he is poor, not because he doesn't, did not find it, you know, because it's not good for me. I'm going to speak about myself, you know. Now I'm that old, you know. I have asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for many things, you know, in the past. Some of them, they were done for me. Alhamdulillah, I should speak publicly, you know, and loudly, you know, in front of everyone. I should appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those things. You know. On the other hand, you have some other things, you know, which did not happen to me. Now when I look back, now, after many years, when I look back, I feel that they are not good for me. Okay, and I am going to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make them beautiful for me because they are going to be harmful for me. Yeah, I may understand some of those uh, measurements, you know, taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I'm telling you, I'm not going to understand all of them, you know. You should build your relation. You should build your reliance. You should build your confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by this, you are going to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? The uh, I think all Muslims, they, they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But perhaps many of them, they love the needed or the basic love, you know, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, I was told, you know, about it, you know, we love our children more, you know. We feel our heart shaky, you know, toward the children much more. We feel uh, many of those matters, you know, in our heart. That's why the Prophet sallallahu as narrated by Sirat ibn Hisham, he mentioned many of the khutbas, you know, of the Prophet what the meaning khutbah? Khutbah that's me for public people, not for specialized one or for, for special people, you know. He mentioned in one of these khutbah, what did he say? He said, أحب الله بكل قلوبكم. Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of your heart. What does it mean, you know? I'm going to explain it, you know, to my own way. That's mean we have divided the heart, you know, for rooms. And we gave one of these room to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, what did he say? He said, 
take away all of these walls, okay, and make the, the whole heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, 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 I'm telling you all about the ordinary way. Most of us, we are going to reach the love of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by graduation, by building up, you know, our knowledge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by building, when we build up, you know, our knowledge. Is this knowledge needed, you know? Yes, the Prophet sallallahu did address Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas. Well, he was 13 years, uh, uh, three one, okay, 13 years old, you know, when the Prophet sallallahu passed away. And I assume he was less than this, you know, when he was instructed by him sallallahu alayhi wa What did he say? The Prophet ﷺ did say, "Ta'arraf ila Allah fi al-rahaa'il." Work hard. Ta'arraf in Arabic language. You know, when you have tafa'al, it means you should work hard. Something against your will, against your passion. You know, it's something that some people may think this is against their nature. You know, or whatever. You know. Uh, you may face some difficulties, you know, to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the beginning. But this is, I said, only at the beginning. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu did mention, you know, الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِهِ وَحُفَّةِ النَّارُ بِالشَّهَوَاتِ حُفَّةِ What's the meaning of حُفَّةِ? It's like a margin, okay? You have the margin, you know, surrounding the hellfire, you know, all of our desires, you know, and what like, what we like. And we have the margin, you know, of the other place, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all go, go to that place, you know. Uh, it's, it's surrounded, you know, or the marg margin, not surrounded, yani completely. And only the margin of it, you know, is going to be the hated or disliked one, you know, or the, the difficulties or the hardship, you know, of it, you know. What the meaning of uh, margin? That means, this is what I understand. Whenever you penetrate, it's not going to be difficult, you know, on you. It's not going to be hard on you. It's going to enjoy your time, you know, with your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with your reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with your trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the happy people, you know, in this life, you know. Some of us may think that the happiest, those who have a lot of money, or those who have nice house, or nice car, or uh, high education, or whatever, you know. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say in Quran, Ala inna awliya Allahi, la khawfun alayhim wa lahum What's the meaning of it, you know? I understand it this way. They are not fearful, you know, of the future. They, they don't feel sad, you know, for the past, you know. And this is for me, this is the actual, the real happiness, you know. The, you, you are not going to be happy, you know, by money or whatever, you know. Why? Because you may, some of us, not all of us, you know, we may enjoy our time, you know, for certain amount of years and then we are going to move, you know, elsewhere. If I'm now pass away, firstly, they will take my watch, they will take my eyeglasses, you know, in mo much more private area, they will take away my clothes, you know. Now, what I'm trying to say, the people around you will not let anything, you know, any material of this life, you know, go with you. You are going to go, Alone? I was about to say alone. No, the Prophet ﷺ did not say alone. You are going to go with your deeds. Those love you, you know, among the people, the wells, they may join you. Where? To the cemetery only. And they will return back, you know. No one has the, the, the guts, you know, to stay with you for one night, you know, or whatever, you know. You are going to stay alone, everything taken away. And you are going to be left with your deeds, you know. And this is, has been highlighted in the Holy Quran when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ma hasharthani a'ma wa qad kuntu basir. How come, ya Allah, you make me blind, you know, the hereafter? In all of my life, I have very strong, you know, sight. Why? Because that person, he did fix, you know, his physical eye. He did not fix the eyes of the heart. Do you have eyes in the heart? Yes. This is narrated by Darimi. You know that uh, they describe the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. Whenever I don't have such an experience, because I am deficient, not because it's not the case, okay? They describe the heart of the Prophet. It contains two eyes and two ears.
Okay? That, so just imagine, you know, you are blind and you are deaf, you know. How are we going to work, you know?